welcome to the Explain It podcast with Ingrid Hernandez and Caroline Kane. She is on her way. Uh, once again, she's got a little technical difficulties with her camera, but she will be here. Um, today is a big day. We have an amazing, amazing couple with us, and I'm so excited. I'm going to pop them onto the podcast in just a moment and let people catch up, but i um, so excited. If you guys don't haven't been watching our stories and talking about this amazing couple out of Hawaii, then you are missing out. Um, hopefully you guys have all gotten your questions ready, especially if you're a wholesaler and you want to do right by your buyers. Today, we're going to talk about selling to flippers, like people who actually put their neck on the line, making these communities beautiful and all the stress that comes with it. I had a little PTSD watching um, the renovation Aloha show on HGTV because things were happening and I'm like, oh my God, what a stressful moment. Um, so hi, Yvette. I see you out there. Hi, Michelle Armando. Yes. Renovation Aloha is an amazing show. Okay. We got our girl. We got the ginger Caroline Kane. Hi, young lady. Hello. I am always having, I don't know what happened to me. I, the Apple update messed me up, but anyway. Well, hello, how's it going, Ingrid? Good, good. I was just letting the people know that backstage we have the amazing couple, uh, Kamohai and Tristan, and uh, like I was catching up on their renovation Aloha show, which I, I, I was just finishing saying that was giving me some PTSD because if you have flipped a house, you realize how much is involved. But I will say. It, flipping in Hawaii is a whole different animal because I was paying attention to the things that they have to care for. And I'm like, wow, we do not have to do those things. So I'm excited about asking them a few questions after watching their show. I think they're probably blowing things out of proportion. Hawaii sounds like it's really easy to do anything. So oh, I, don't totally. know I mean, I'm sure about. they get materials there in time all the time. Oh, yeah. They probably just grow everything on island. I don't, I bet nothing has to be imported. Totally. I, actually, I think I saw Tristan making door hinges herself. I think they like they have child labor things with their kids. They're putting them to work. I'm, I'm excited to hear what they say. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cool. So shall we have them up? Let's bring them on up here so they can. Actually, I kind of like just saying stuff where they can't dispute it in the backstage. What else should we say about them? Mm -hmm. um, uh, Kamahai is only 5'5", five, five, guys. So that means uh, Tristan is only two feet tall. Just so you guys know. So when you look at them on TV, they're they're little people. Um, <laughs> oh my god! Y'all are hysterical. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you guys. For <laughs> awesome. I'm so excited to have you guys on. Um, I know you guys were talking with Ingrid the other day. I was like, dude, let's just bring them on the podcast and chat with yeah. them. So, yeah. first, I just want to know how do you guys get things off of the top shelf? Yeah, him. <laughs> I I don't. I just use my guy here. <laughs> or or she jumps on my shoulders. We or, have been no, known to do that. I have been known to jump on a countertop or two to get what I need. You know I, what I mean? Uh, I used to do that too. I've, I've been there, done that. <laughs> cool. By the way, Mark had me uh, write a couple of questions he had as we were watching Ooh. the show. Oh and no he, way! He was like, "Do they have? Do they have a step stool that they officially have everywhere they go, so that when <laughs> when Tristan goes to job sites that like." you know, we can make sure she can get to where she needs to. That's so. classic. <laughs> we have a step stool every single time we do interviews yes. because our height difference is too crazy. Right. So she's, she's actually standing yeah. on like a foot step stool when we're yeah. doing interviews. It's yeah. Classic. Because it's they're not like they, the cameras are like this and like, guys, we can't do this. It's not, yeah. this is not cohesive. We can't yeah. get you both in frame here. I want to see one where they just have it on camera high and they have to, pan down go seven. down yeah I know. Oh, That's just just on this. <laughs> there was one shot where like come high you were like really let's see where's my screen like really high up and all we saw of tristan was just my her forehead. head yeah so that <laughs> was like cut off you were, you were like here yeah like this yeah. Oh <laughs> and, we my gosh. and then we started cracking up because that's like, my life and then if they run the words on like the screen or something you can't even see me you just you know like very tip top of my head like that <laughs> <laughs> oh. no hey, who travels on an airplane better though who has a better time while traveling on an airplane me. totally me i can sit anywhere and find some 
some position that's comfortable. Like I can fully extend my feet. Everything. Yeah, I'm, I'm curled up. It depends on how we're flying, but normally I'm just curled up with my knees touching the front seat. It's are you, not- how tall are you? Six, four, are you six, five, four, six, four. My step, that's six, seven. So anytime we travel anywhere, it was, it was brutal. Yeah. Six, wow. seven. That's crazy. Yeah. I see Inger with her phone. So I want so to. So I am too. letting the people know that they need to be coming on to YouTube and. Yeah, come on, people. Our HTV stars some questions. <laughs> <laughs> While Ingrid does that, I'm going to get us rocking and rolling because um, I'm just excited that you guys are on here. And I'm trying, I've told you guys I wanted to come out for your premiere, but I really want to be out there like on 4th of July, like when it's a million degrees here. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm going to pepper you guys with some questions because I've had a lot of new people coming in and I want to make sure they're getting an opportunity to just kind of see because most people I talk to want to do fix and flipping. I mean, Ingrid's doing fixing and flipping right now. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm considering a few fix and flips that are coming in my pipeline just because like the numbers are so nice. Yeah. But it's not really something I want to do. I mean, it's not, it hasn't been my calling. I'd rather get in and out and just wholesale a deal and move on to the next homeowner. So yeah. when did you guys start wholesaling? What are, Fixing and flipping from wholesale. What did you do? Tell us about you besides your height height difference. Height differences. Yeah. Uh, the good good question. Very good question. Yeah. yeah. Tell us how you what how did you decide to start making money like this? Yeah. Honestly, you guys, like we didn't do the normal progression, I think, of real estate investors and what is normal anyway. But we went straight into fix and flip because the first mentorship that we were a part of was heavy, heavy fix and flip focused. And so we just naturally went into that direction. And so wholesale wasn't even like a thought. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's so hindsight's always twenty twenty. I think I would have rather wholesaled <laughs> yeah. the first couple of deals that I did that we did. But we're the kind of people where if you give us a roadmap, we're going to follow it exactly. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's one of our superpowers that that has been that has helped us a lot, you know. Um, mm-hmm. And so the mentorship that we joined, that's exactly what they taught. And we did it to a T. They said, go out, get an agent, start making offers on the MLS find a deal, fix and flip it. And so that's literally what we did. And that was, I think we didn't wholesale a deal until a few years in. Yeah, we decided to go nationwide, which is genius. Guys, everybody, when you're brand new, you should absolutely, as soon as you get started, go nationwide, do deals in Alaska, (laughs) Hawaii, Indiana. Oh my gosh. Um, Gary, Indiana, if you guys are going to start, Gary, Indiana is the best place. (laughs) Like where, what were we thinking? But yeah, we, and we wholesaled on like random random spots north dakota or was it south, south dakota i don't know some like hodunk town i am apologize if anyone lives in south dakota it's not a hodunk place yeah you know, uh, I, 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 <laughs> uh texas where else like just ohio random, all random, random spots random yeah. but yeah well, compared to hawaii money i mean you guys are like billionaires basically if you look for land in ohio or north dakota right and I think that's why you almost get a skewed perception because you're like, oh my God, it's so cheap. You know what I mean? And then in reality, it's like not even a good deal. You know what I mean? But you're like, it's so cheap. <laughs> but oh, why? That's a $3 million house. Yeah. <laughs> it's only 15000 So It's wild. Yeah. It is wild. Yeah. So for all the new people on here, this is your tip. Do not do stuff nationwide. Pick a market, stick with the market and ask somebody who's been doing it for a while. That's the best way to get started. It, just like you, comma high, like I'm same way. Show me the roadmap. Tell me what I need to do. And I'm going to go run through that wall. I'm, I'm going to run through the brick wall once I know that it's successful and it can pan out. Yeah. So you guys fixed and flipped and then you considered wholesaling because you heard it was easier and quicker. When did you guys start fixing and, and flipping? And like, like, when did you guys get started in real estate? Yeah. Uh, six years ago, I think. About yeah. six years ago. Six years ago. And the first like... I don't know, maybe six months we were just educating ourselves. Oh, so um, like longer than maybe that. a little longer. Yeah. But we both had other careers. So we were still in, I, I ran um, some retail stores. I had three stores with my brother. We, we had those stores for almost 14 years. And Tris wow. was, she owns and operates a nonprofit. And that's what she was doing before that. So she actually dragged me to that seminar that we went to. And when we joined, we were still doing the other things and kind of just educating ourselves. And it mm-hmm. took us a little while um, until we actually fully went all in. I would say that was like 
2018. Tw yeah, between 2018 and 2019 yeah. was very pivotal where um, we closed down the retail stores and it was like, all right, he went all into real estate and I was still, I would say I was like 75% in because I was still working my W2 and running the nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And then we were just making offers on the MLS like consistently because that's what roadmap we were given at that time was, you know, connect with a investor friendly realtor and just make offers on the MLS. Look for investor special, need major repair, um, tear down and just make offers on those. And like, guys, we were literally going to every single, um, house, like walking it <laughs> ourselves. And, um, our They're, first she's day laughing of for everybody because that's a <laughs> terrible use of time. That's a terrible <laughs> yeah. use of time. Don't do it is, it is. Um, but we learned so much during that time, you know, we learned what to look for and we actually found a contractor not the best one, but at least one that was willing to walk stuff with us and make us look at things. Cause like I was a licensed mental, mental health counselor. He was a retail shop owner. We knew nothing about renovation and, and condition and what to look for. And then the first house that we flipped was off the MLS and it was probably the 20th house we looked at in one day we like started early in the morning and like literally till maybe like yep. seven o'clock we had our, our regular job so we would stack on all the, the viewings on the weekend uh and start in the morning and go look at every single house all day long yeah and th the house that we got was the last house we saw that day in the pitch black because it didn't have electricity and of course that's the one that our offer gets accepted <laughs> Yeah, and it had no bumps or bruises. It was probably like just shut. Yeah, it was the easiest, glass. easiest thing we've ever done. Every <laughs> single thing that could have went wrong on that house went wrong. We we had underestimated the the rehab budget. We hired the wrong contractor. We ran into issues with the city and permitting because. Mm -hmm. We didn't even know we needed to pull permits. That's how right? naive we were. Um, yeah. So everything went wrong. We we ended up breaking even on that deal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We held it four times longer than we were <laughs> supposed to hold it. Yeah. Uh, I think it took us a, a entire year to do it. Wow. It should have wow. taken us two months. And and like right when we went to market was uh, March of 2020 i want to say like february march so it's like right when covid was shutting down the freaking world and so we're like great this is gonna be our last flip we're gonna lose our ass like it's terrible you know what i mean luckily we ended up figuring it out and breaking even but guys we were so naive we even um just paid our private lenders a flat flat rate we didn't even know you had to annualize it <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we didn't even no know we had to. We way. didn't even know. Oh, yeah. This is the oh, craziest yeah. thing. We we closed on the deal. We signed the closing docs to buy it. And I went home and I looked at the docs and I was reading through it. And I realized that we needed to make a $6,000 payment every month. Interesting. I I didn't know <laughs> that we, need to, we needed to make monthly payments. I thought we were going to be able to pay our lender out at the end of the deal when we sold it. So that's how clueless we were, we yeah. were like jumping in head first. It's it crazy. was crazy. It was crazy. You know what's but, cool? I, guess, huh. but I was just going to say like, how much did you guys learn in that first, like how much would you have paid to learn what you did in that first deal you, you accomplished? Exactly. I would have paid a lot of money. Invaluable. If, if it would have saved us from what we went through. But <laughs> we always get asked that like, will we go back and do anything different? The one thing we think that could have saved us tremendously is joint venturing with an experienced investor because we would have mitigated a lot of that headache, right? Because they had the skill set and the resources that we didn't at that time. You know what I mean? So we maybe we would have done that. But at the end of the day, we didn't do that. And we wouldn't change it for the world because we got a master's degree in flipping on our first flip. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So, yeah. Dang. That's, yeah, that's you got like the total opposite spectrum of my first flip. Of I your know, story. I know. I know. You, that's why you were telling your story on the pod. I was like, oh my gosh, that's a home run yeah. on the first one. Yeah, so yeah. crazy. But it feels like you probably would have made a whole lot more um, mm -hmm. because you said you didn't know you had to annualize. So did you overpay your private money yeah. lenders? That yeah, we, yeah, we overpaid them. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's why we ended up breaking even because we gave profit away to them but we have private lenders for life you know what i mean yeah, I was gonna say, they're like what's your next deal can i like yeah. 
Well, like, that conversation a- wasn't fun because those private lenders were like friends and family. Yeah. So at the same time, we didn't want to like go back and be like, hey, actually, we overpaid you. I, and I was never going to do that. It was like, yeah, oh, that never was bad, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the the silver lining is the education program that we joined taught us how to underwrite deals correctly, mm-hmm. right? Because every single thing went wrong and we still didn't lose money on that deal, yeah. yeah. right? And so what that means is, and we always tell people this, it is so important. You make the deal on the buy. Yes. That is literally where everything happens. And because we underwrote the deal correctly, we didn't lose lose money. Yeah, Ooh, that is actually for that's your first gold nugget of the podcast today, guys. You're making money on the front end of the deal. You have to. You are not. We don't don't try and fit a square peg in a round hole. Make sure it actually functions because you held on to it for so long. I, I wish you guys would have held on to it. Maybe like six more months, you probably would have made even more money just because. Right. Of, I know we right. would have totally. That, that, that's crazy. That but that yeah. is a really good tip because there's, I mean, Ingrid and I see it. We underwrite deals. We have people bring stuff to us all the time. I'm sure you guys have people bring you deals. And you're like, I think it's a deal. I think it's a deal. And it's, it, it's not a deal guys. You got to underwrite and look at things. And that's why, I mean, I'm going to transition here to a question for you guys, but it's hard to find deals, guys. It's easy to put anything under contract, but it's hard to actually negotiate and make sure that the numbers work. So that was your first deal that you had fixed and flipped and you listed it in March of 2020? Yeah, February or March of 2020. The, the week before the whole nation shut down. Yeah. Okay, so you listed then. How many flips have you guys done since then to now, uh, April 2024? Mm. I don't even know. I should know this number. Roughly uh, 10. No, roughly, I, I think it's like 75 or 80, Something probably. Like yeah. 75 or 80. Then. Are you guys, so now you have a TV show. You're on yes. Renovation Aloha? Renovation yes. Aloha. Renovation Aloha. Aloha. Okay. So are you guys looking for more deals right now? Are you are you constantly well, fixing and flipping? Always looking for deals. I think throughout the years, we figured out what is too many projects at one time and then where our sweet spot is. And I think you only figured that out by doing it. At one time, we had over 30 and I was like, oh, this is too much. So our like sweet 30 spot. 30 flips at one point? Yeah, dude. Yeah. A year. Yeah. Well, I mean, at, at the same any- time, you have 30 flips happening at one time? Uh, at, in all different stages. All different yeah, stages. some are some are selling, some are just starting, some are midway, you yeah. know what I mean? And it was right. that is too much. And so mm-hmm. for us it's never been about quantity. It's always been about the quality of the deal, especially in Hawaii our, our, we have a lot thicker chunkier margins that we're working with, but our price points are also super high. So our fees are very high and the, the capital raise is, is high. So, yeah. you know, our sweet spot is between like right around 20 deals a year and we're still like, we're good. Um, but yes, we are always looking for deals. Oh always. Do you, are you ever not looking for deals if you're an investor? <laughs> That's the thing. So I want to say this for so many people, because I, I think I called you guys, I texted you guys last week and someone's like, Hey, I'm new. I'm in Hawaii. Like I want to have opportunities. I'm like, yep. I, mm-hmm. it just worked out. You guys were doing a meetup in like two hours. I'm like, go to the meetup, go talk to yes. them. So, yeah. yeah. For everybody on here, when you want a JV or joint venture with people who have done it, the biggest thing they want is deals. So understanding what a deal actually looks like is huge. So one thing for me in Phoenix here, and I know with Ingrid, because Ingrid also deals to Ingrid and see if she'll buy it. What we can do here is whatever my after repair value is. So once my house looks like it's ready to be finished on a renovation Aloha, when it's all pretty, that's yeah. called ARV. That's what I know what it can sell for top dollar. I've had Tristan and Kamahai go in there and get all the rats out. They cleaned it up. It's completely done. And somebody wants to move in here. Okay. In Phoenix, I know I can move those deals like, I'm going to have everybody draw drooling if I'm giving them a deal like 50, 60% of ARV. So if you're thinking to make it simpler on a dollar, if I can sell a house at 50 to 60 cents on the dollar, oh my gosh, that cash buyer is probably going to take me out to Nobu, buy me some new shoes and all kinds of stuff because it's it's got a lot of margin. Yeah. Depending on, this is specific, depending on the amount of work that needs to happen. So Hawaii, uh, say it the right way because I'm white. Tell me how to say the word. Hawaii. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm from Indiana. I'm from a cornfield. I'm very <laughs> not cultured. But um, for you guys, where do you want to be on your margins when you're buying deals? So in case you have like, oh, man, we bought a house and there's a tree growing out of it. Like this is going to be more work than we thought. Where do you want to be percentage wise when people send you deals? 
Yeah. So, I mean, I think it's similar to you with the, it's, it's obviously depending on how much work the house needs, but we're normally right around 70, 75%. Um, I know people here that buy all the way up to like 80%, wow. sometimes 82%. Um, the price points are so much higher. So even at that, the margin's still like a hundred grand sometimes, you know what I mean? Um, but we're normally looking at uh what our total return on investment is and we normally want to be at like 13 or 14 percent on that number um but if i'm just like uh, throwing out a good number we want to be like 75 percent. i would say so for new people because whenever people talk and say that i had no idea what they were saying i was like uh-huh great so whatever the renovation aloha number is that they can sell the house for they want to just make 13 to 14 percent of whatever that number is correct did i yep. just think correct so say it's a say it's a million dollar home you're trying to look for a profit of 13 percent of a million dollars 14 the higher margin they can make on that the more likely they're going to be like hi where's my next deal please send me more yeah. so yeah yes. my next yes. question for you guys because you're constantly looking for deals did you are you guys doing another season do you guys know yet are you allowed to say that not allowed to talk you about that confirm yet. or deny yeah <laughs> we'll, <laughs> yeah. we'll talk about it off record afterwards but um yeah so what you guys can do or this is what i'm curious about because you guys are you, this is your business you guys fix and flip you guys have the cruise you know what to look for you've got a routine going you got a nice groove would I'm on mainland. I don't know what to look for in Hawaii. In Hawaii. If I find something, can I bring it to you? And since you are um, Chief Camel High's son, can you help me talk to the <laughs> homeowner and potentially negotiate this and I can just get a fee and learn from you? Is that a possibility? Dude. And it's happened. A hundred percent. We, we actually, I mean, that's my favorite, favorite thing to do. Um, and so, I mean, just a specific example, we had uh, one of a good friend in sub two, he randomly got a lead in one of my hometowns in Kaneohe, and that's where we do a lot of deals. But he's like, hey, I don't even know this market. I think this could be a deal. Do you want it? Like basically just like, hey, can you call this seller? I just had one contact with her and she said she wanted to sell her house, but I haven't done anything further. And I was like, yes, I will. And I talked to the seller, we negotiated, went out there, like it took a little while, but we locked up the contract and I cut him a pretty big check just for sending me the lead, Yeah. right? Yeah. So um, yes, we do that all the time. The cool thing too is like, I'll actually talk to you if you're like very interested um, in the process that I utilize and we can work through that. Like I'll, t I'll teach you what I say. I I'll, I'll talk you through all of that stuff as well. If, if your goal is to actually learn. Um, so yeah, we, we love that and welcome it for sure. That is a, that's a pro tip. I just sold a deal to somebody and I was like, I wanted to make content on it. So I said, all right, if I work with this deal with you, will you let me shoot content with you afterwards? Once you've finished fixing it up, I'm like, yeah, absolutely. I was like, all right, bet done deal. Sick. So guys, when you're, yeah, so sick. people want yeah, them to continue, man. like fix and flippers want deals to keep coming in their pipeline. They want to keep them going. And that is like a pro tip. Can you show me, tell me why you're underwriting this way? How do I know how, how can I not waste your time again next time? Come high? What do I, what should I look for when I'm underwriting this deal? What kind of, what am do I, what is the big ticket item that I need to be aware of so it doesn't yeah. crush the deal? And I think yeah. buyers will do that. Uh, Ingrid, I feel like you were about to ask something. Yeah, I was going to say, mm -hmm. uh, so like trying to study, you know, the differences between what you guys have to worry about versus what we have to worry about. Like, uh, here's what I, what I took away. Uh, you guys, for the most part, are always looking at needing either to do foundation repair or actually replacing the foundation. Uh, you have to do termite uh, like control, whether it's or during or especially it seems like it's an after thing every single time. Right. You're yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, we and tent every house. We don't have to necessarily worry about here. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, what was what's crazy is like I was curious about your value adds. Like mm -hmm. do you have to um, I just watched your I think your episode four. And you guys added more um, square footage. But mm -hmm. I also know politically, because because I watch all the stuff you guys post on how hard it is to get permits. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm just curious, like how you manage across that as well. So there's all these costs, costs and costs. Yes. Like yeah. I'm just yeah. 
And by the way, another thing I really, really love about your show is that you guys don't just gloss over that stuff. You actually say, no. hey, here's my holding costs and my closing yeah. costs. Yeah. And girl, yeah. we had to. We had to yes. Oh yes. Yeah. Every time, every time. And we had to fight for that because we were like, no, if you're going to come into the business and showcase the investor side of things to the world, like people can't think it's, um, sales price minus renovation equals profit. Cause that's just not what it is. You know what I mean? So I'm glad that we won that, that they showcase those numbers. <laughs> yeah. And, and you're right. You pointed out all the things that we have to deal with that not necessarily everybody has to deal with in their specific market and that's a good it's a good tip is is your every market is different mm -hmm. every every area is different there's a lot of commonalities between a lot of things but you have to become like an expert and really clear on your local market and yeah the things that we, we always have to deal with um foundation issues always. because most of our houses are built on post and pier. Mm -hmm. You guys have houses have slab on grade. Like there is no post and pier here, right? Yeah. And so all our houses were built that way. So over time, the land moves mm -hmm. and there's settling issues. So almost every house has to get jacked up and leveled. And not to mention like a lot of these houses that are on post and pier, right? There's termite pens. And if there is no termite pens then the termites just go straight up and eat all that wood. And now you're have a very structurally compromised foundation. And so like, we're always checking that stuff because out of experience, your home inspector, when you get the property under contract and you're going to sell it, they're going to look under the house and they're going to make sure that the buyer as the buyer should get a solid foundation that's safe for their family. You know what I mean? And like another thing that I remember I was having um, a conversation with, um, uh, someone else in Arizona and they're like, wait, where's your, where's your ducting for your AC? I'm like, we don't have that. We don't have that here. We don't have, um, central AC systems. We don't, we have splits or we have wall units that are just in your window or or, or fans or fans. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's so funny. Like, and we also don't have tons of basements here. Um, I mean, there's like some that are below grade, but they're still not really considered a basement. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. The permit thing is crazy uh, here. They're trying to like really reform it. But I would say that we have the worst, uh, longest permitting thing ever. I would ever. say in the nation. Yeah. I would so say like the worst. a typical addition alteration permit will take eight months to get. Cool. On, the, on the quick end. On the very quick end and can go as much as two years we just got permits done for my parents house and it took two years two to get those years. permits and they're adding a second story and uh a pretty big lanai off the side of their of their home and so it, it's actually poli very po political here and it's actually a big issue but i think the key is understanding the system and having the resources to continually follow up it's just like with our leads, right? Follow up. It's the same thing. Like you need to be following up, push, put your permit on a drip campaign. I'm telling you, because if you're not, you're going to go to the bottom of the stack and you're going to be waiting years and years. So I think our, the team and the resources that we've been able to build just in the past six years has been monumental. So having a solid contractor that knows the inspectors in your area and has good relationships with them, having a solid draftsman that literally can go down to DPP and move the permit and answer and is following up. If there's comments on your permit, he's going to address them really quickly. And he answers his phone. That's a big oh. one. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's really no, a, a lot of people are like, how are you guys getting your permits so fast? And that's TV magic. We're not, we're yeah. not getting our, <laughs> our, we're not they're, 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 We're not, we're going I think the fastest like one else. that we got from the show is like six, six, months i think six wow. or seven months yeah. and then yeah. uh, all the way up to like yeah 13 months but we started this process of the tv um production company three years ago i was just yeah. asking right? you guys so, last summer and you're like yeah we're yeah filming. you remember mm -hmm. yeah yeah, you're like, oh, yeah we're so filming. gotta get back because we're still filming so it's yeah. crazy how long it takes to get all fully produced are you guys still filming so right long. now no we're done with season one um okay. but we filmed all last year 
what you guys are seeing on HGTV now. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, this is actually, <laughs> wait, should I say it? The actual triple digit flips. <laughs> because yeah, yeah. Every <laughs> single deal is like, you know, over a hundred grand that we, that I watched so far. Yeah, they're um, not all that way, but most of them usually but, yeah. are. And that's our criteria, honestly, because it's like yeah. we're going to play with this extra zero on the end. Like our minimum requirement has to be 100 grand to do that deal. Here's you know? my question for you. How much is a gallon of milk right now in Hawaii? Oh, dude, 650 six, So there you guys go. So you're like, man, they're making triple digit flips, but you don't know how much their milk is and everything. And it's going to get you some. It's wild. How, Armenian, how much is Median? it in Arizona? I don't buy milk, Ingrid. What's your guys? <laughs> what's your guys' median home price? Uh, uh, four hundred fifty thousand. Okay. Yeah, where I'm from, one, in Indiana. One point one. Oh wow, Indiana or yeah. Nebraska? The, where I'm from in small town Indiana, the, for a three bedroom, two bath house, moderately updated, pretty good shape, hundred and forty two thousand. Wow. But that's what's out of uh, the Indiana. <laughs> but here's yeah. the thing: we don't have we don't have mountains, we don't have beaches, and yeah. I just like super glue quarters to the ground to Walmart and watch people pick them up. Like that's what I did for time. <laughs> I talked to somebody oh my gosh, that's high awesome. school, I forever, and we're like catching up. And I was like, "How would you explain what we did for fun in high school?" Because like you grew up in a small town, you're like, "We're cool, we're cool." And he's like, "Light acts of vandalism, like we'd egg people and TV." Oh my gosh, like, oh my God. there's just nothing nice. to do where I'm from. So that's yeah. why that's so funny. Yeah. So um, funny. that's what I was trying to bring up your show right here really quickly. I have, I do have HBO, so I'll watch it later, but I, I want, I know Ingrid brought up the renovations you guys are doing and I can see some right here. So this is your first one that had the tree in it. Yeah. Yep. That's yep. the pilot. The house. That's the pilot guys. We actually shot that one in 2022. Oh, I can't pull it up. Wow. In 2022. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. So yeah. how long did this one take to complete? Uh, the actual renovation part was not that not long. long. Uh, a couple months. Um, but what people don't know about that house is we didn't have electricity the entire time we did that house. We did the whole renovation on like, a generator. I thought, I thought you guys were going to talk about that in the show because I remember you saying that to me and then I was like, oh, this is the tree house, the, the biggest yeah. pain in the butt one. And then yeah. I was like... I didn't mention that. Yeah, yeah. that that hit the, the cutting room floor. There's so much stuff that you talk about and it doesn't make the episode. But yeah, so we did that entire renovation on a generator because the house was abandoned for like 20 plus years. And wow. so Hawaiian Electric, the electric company here, literally pulled the meter off the house. And so um, that actually took a long time to work with Hiko and Hawaiian Electric to get the meter put back on the house so that we can actually have electricity. So that took longer, honestly, than the, the whole renovation was just to get electricity. So, and yeah. what you did to that house was so dope. Like, thank you. You know, you, you, I don't know if I should share, but let's just I say, no, you got to watch it. <laughs> that house was crazy. And I was oh, like, oh. man. They should have told me about this. We would have lived on one side. <laughs> there you go. House hacked it. Yeah, yeah I know. Yeah. It would have been a great house hack. It really, yeah. really yeah. would have. Yeah. yeah. We almost kept that house. Yeah. We were this close we were. to just refining it and keeping it. Yeah. But yeah. we found a better opportunity and kept that one. So are you how many houses do you guys have right now that you've kept? What makes you decide you're gonna keep it or sell it? I mean, if we can if we can keep it for little to no money out of our pocket mm -hmm. then and it's gonna at least break even in hawaii on oahu then we'll keep them yeah um, lo location i think i also look at midterm rental rates i look at section 8 rates so it kind of depends on if it's going to be able to cover the mortgage and so if there's ability to make it a multifamily situation or a more than one unit situation, then it's more enticing for us to keep. Yeah, that's sure. the hardest part about here is we're a high equity appreciation market. We're not a cash flow market like at all in any area of yeah. Oahu. Yeah. Uh, and so if we end up keeping a house, normally we're value adding. Mm -hmm. So we're building that equity and, and uh, appreciation in the house but we're also cutting it up into like three or four different rentals. Yeah. yeah. So we can actually still break even or cash flow. It's you know the what only I mean? way you really can here. Um, unless you're on the big island. So we like to keep a lot of stuff in Hilo um, specifically because the price point is a lot lower. So it's so much easier to cash flow there. Yeah. Wow. But how many houses have we kept on Oahu? Um, one, two, three, four. 
five, six, seven. I don't wow. know. Ten. Okay. I don't on know. Oahu, and then probably the same amount on Big Island. Yeah, but we really like Florida too. So we're building a small portfolio in Florida. So we have a, a fourplex in Florida. We just bought a triplex uh, specifically in Jacksonville. We have an Airbnb in St. Aug. We have a sub two in Tallahassee, kind of in the gets. But super gets. Um, you guys just like termite houses. <laughs> termite houses. We know. just like cat. We, I like Florida. I like Humidity. Florida. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I'm but, learning your language too because you're like cherry. And I was like, <laughs> Cherry. Yeah. Uh, I learned pow. Like pow. you're done, right? Yep, yep, yep. All pow. done. All pow. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. I also gave you a definition of shishi, which is literally going to urinate in the bathroom. Yeah. It's funny. Yeah. yeah. You don't realize that you have, you know, these little quirks and daily things that you say until you I still cringe seeing myself on TV, guys. I'm like, oh, I really said that. Oh man. I was it's that it's up. weird. <laughs> My it's daughter weird. came into the house and she saw you because obviously she's met you and she's like, hey. Yeah. She's like, <laughs> Like, so excited to see you guys on TV. That's, you may be cringing, but if my 14-year-old thinks you look cool up there, you're you're good. You're good. Oh you're good. yay! I get the teenage approval. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, uh, all right. So you guys are doing all these flips. You've started. To, you do have some properties that you're keeping. Yes. I'm curious, if you were going to get started again today, mm. knowing what you know now, what would you do first? I definitely wholesale first. Yeah, Why I think I would wholesale first. It's just to build up capital, dude. Yeah. When it, we started, we were had we were in debt. We had like negative money. You know what I mean? And like we flipped our way out of debt and into home ownership. But that's like the way riskier way to well, get out well, of debt. It's riskier know? and it took longer and it yeah. was harder. Yeah. I would say. I think that I think that we could have wholesaled and got to where we wanted to be quicker. Mm -hmm. We could have done it quicker. Like we could have wholesaled that first deal for 50 grand. Yeah. Like I'm not without a shadow of a doubt, we could have easily wholesale it for 50 grand. Mm, totally. um, and all we really needed was to build a little bit of capital. I think we would have got to where we wanted to go so much faster. So much faster, yeah. less let's, risk, but let's less pause stress. For a moment because you guys have only been doing this six years, you said, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Six years tiny little years i know that's not a lot no and, it's not uh, and and so for for me i i i some i think there's a book and i still haven't read it. it's called like the gap in the gain mm -hmm. gap in the gain yeah, yeah. yeah yeah especially when you have like like high performing personalities like yourselves you're like man i could have like gone a yeah. hundred miles faster yeah. yeah but the reality is you've done a ton in six years mm -hmm. like start looking back at how many properties you've kept, how many flips you've actually done. Like uh, Caroline asking you, like, how many flips have you actually done? And you can't even answer I know. that. Yeah. We, we should be able to answer that. Yeah. <laughs> we should no, be but, so I, I, I don't see that as a negative. I see that as such a positive that you've yeah. done so much in such a short amount of time. And also that you're not keeping, like, you're not like, you know, what, what's that called when you do like the little five little lines and you're like, you score. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Like yeah. your score is so much different. Like one of the things I really love about the show and, and the part that tugs at my heartstrings more, and hopefully if you guys all watch Renovation Aloha, go watch it, that you guys incorporate your sellers where you can and how much you actually care. Like Mark even mentioned my husband, right? He's like, wow, you guys like saved that, um, that American flag for that mm -hmm. seller. Mm -hmm. You incorporate the mango tree for the seller who was super emotional about her parents' house. And I was just like, this is <laughs> why you do this. It's not yeah. just, you know, these numbers that you're yeah. tracking. It's yeah. the human component, the blessing to mm -hmm. the house, the making sure that like, you're actually creating more community and it's something to be super proud of. So, yeah. Yeah. You said I, that so well. Yeah. I absolutely love that you pointed that out because I think uh, it is easy. And I think for a lot of people, when you're getting started, it really is like, I just need to get out of debt. Like I need to crawl my way out. I need to make some money. Um, but what, what you'll realize is, and especially in real estate, that if you want to truly grow and be sustainable long term, 
it's so much more about relationships and people and purpose mm -hmm. and passion, mm -hmm. right? And, and that is really what is going to propel you forward and keep you going for a super long period of time. Because at the end of the day, especially on the acquisition side, we're dealing, yes, we have to know our numbers, but we're dealing with people that have major issues and problems. And sometimes we have to put on that counselor hat mm -hmm. and we really have to dig into what's going on um, and see how we can best serve people. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You know what I mean? And I'm glad that the show allowed us to really talk about that and show that because I don't think a lot of people think about that when they hear about real estate, right? Yeah. Like we're just taking houses, fixing them up. And, but there's so much more. There's a huge human component, you know? Yeah. And the thing about it in Hawaii, we're on an island. We're small. We do, I always say real estate different in Hawaii mm -hmm. because it's, it's very unique. Like, yes, I know that they, these same kinds of issues are everywhere around um, the United States, but in Hawaii, there's something called coconut wireless, right? And your reputation is literally everything, mm -hmm. right? And so not only do you do it because you're a good person and that's what you hold yourself to high values, but you also do it because that seller is going to tell their auntie's uncle's friend mm -hmm. that also has a house <laughs> that they need help with. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so yeah, that was a special part of the show. And I'm so happy that they were able to share that. I'm glad you guys even brought that up because we I talk about it a lot. I mean, I'm on like a million and 90 Zooms, so I bring it up all the time. But for everybody on here, I hope you heard like it touched Ingrid and her husband. How many other people do you think are watching the show? And they're like, wow, like they truly care. And that's sometimes the difference of why people want to work with you. Like they could yeah. potentially, potentially make money with somebody else, but you've heard them out. You're listening to their problem. You're probably going above and beyond serving them. Mm -hmm. And that's what can be the difference maker for you to get a property and set it up so another family can go own it and have a new future with it. Or you can turn it into a multi-purpose property with multiple families in there that can make it affordable, mm -hmm. which is so huge. And one other thing, I was just talking to somebody who's like, yeah, they really want to get into this because they want to make money. But they don't have an ultimate purpose. So I wanted to, I was, I pulled up your Instagram. I was looking at, I love all the pictures you have on here. What else do you guys do in your community? Because I'm sure I know we kind of talked about this when you guys were here uh, for the mastermind. Mm -hmm. Your your dad's kind of a big person in the community. Mm -hmm. How has being so active in your community and helping? Like, how, do you give back? How do you give back? How has that impacted not only like your personal life and your business life? Oh, yeah. man. We feel like so like when we first got started in real estate, right? It was literally just trying to dig ourselves out of like desperation. Um, but once you get to a place, it's like, now it's your responsibility to share everything that you can and how you did it. Because I know that there's a ton more Tristan and Kamal has walking around that are feeling the same way and searching for something. And so I think it, it just is a no brainer where we were like, we need to share everything we can with open arms. And that's why deals and Aloha was created. What you see behind us. It was like, because when we first started, there were, there were meetups, but you weren't allowed to go if you didn't do a certain amount of deals. It was very, oh, wow. yeah, there was gatekeeping. It was close to the chest. It was the opposite of abundant. And we're like, F that dude. Like I want to create something exactly the opposite of that. So deals in Aloha, we're like, we're going to hold meetups. We held them at our own. And then it was like, dude, we need to feature other people. Cause believe it or not, you guys we actually don't like being in the spotlight of every, like we don't like, I would rather elevate other people, but that's how you perpetuate that culture of abundance and community is to elevate everyone around you. And so and then that's why we started the podcast, you know, like let's bring people onto the podcast. Let's bring all of our homies. It started with our friends and then it just morphed into um, just business owners and, uh, and entrepreneurs because Hawaii isn't on the map in the way that it should be. It's on the map for tourism. But what about the born and bred local people here that are just amazing and sharing our culture and perpetuating aloha and are and our just so talented and so creative and are and are thriving like i want hawaii to be on the map for those things and yeah. so that's why the podcast was created and and we're just getting started you know what i mean and obviously we have big shoes to fill when it comes to like 
our parents and, and your father and like we have nothing but role models that have paved the way before us and so it's really cool to now be collaborating with them and having our family so involved in our business it's challenging obviously when you work with family because there's a variety of dynamics that come into play but it's also the most rewarding thing ever to work and build alongside your your family yeah yeah I think that translates to how you were also raised, you know, like the fact that there's patience, there's love, there's kindness. You can totally tell. I think it's why you guys are so much our vibes, right? Like it's why I yeah. love you. Like one yeah. of her, and I think we talked about this on your podcast, right? Like yeah. me, somebody who reveres acts of service is someone mm -hmm. that I'm going to be way more attracted to. And like, yeah. but Caroline's such a great, podcast partner of mine because you know I love her regardless of the podcast because that's how she thinks she thinks with her heart mm -hmm. like how do we help our sellers how do we help new investors who want to yep. learn how to wholesale how to flip and that mm -hmm. type of personality like you'll have much richer relationships yeah. and be able to actually incorporate them into your life like you have with your family you know yeah. and that's yeah. yeah. Fix your upbringing. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. I, I think that's why we're so lucky that we found real estate as our vehicle. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I, I just don't see any other path that where you can literally build generational wealth, like a lot of it for your family. But then right alongside that, you can impact people's lives and change them forever. Mm -hmm. totally. It's like the emerging of the two things that are most important to us, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, I mean, I, I, I just, I don't know. I'm, I'm I have biased, another idea for you. <laughs> yeah. I, th I think you guys have already, maybe, or maybe you've already started thinking about this because Tristan, your, your style and your design totally comes through with how you're mm -hmm. flipping in the back of my head. I'm like, you have to be thinking about, you know, uh, exclusively branding like some tiles and textiles oh, yeah. and things oh, yeah. like that because it makes a lot of sense like i love the wall that you guys did that actually used uh, the hawaiian uh, like it was like coconut um yep. yes it wasn't yeah, it was like so coconut sick. husk it was yeah coconut it's husk. so cool i yeah. love so for me i'm like doing. you guys should be running like a designer warehouse sort of thing and manufacturing some of these textiles that are maybe more i'm I working know. on it girl I'm yeah okay good it. Yeah, Anyways. no, I mean, mm -hmm. but I mean, that was part of the reason why we did the show, right? Like, it wasn't mm -hmm. to be on TV. Being on TV was never on the goal board or the vision board or whatever it was. It was never in the cards. But mm -hmm. we, when we sat down and we looked at each other, and it was like we have this opportunity. God brought this opportunity for a purpose. Mm -hmm. It's our responsibility to walk through it. But like, what's that gonna do? What's the purpose? And it was like to do 10 X what we're doing now, you know what I mean? And get to where we want to go quicker. And so we actually just started a design, uh, build construction company where we're able, cause so many times we got, you know, people in the DMS, like, Hey, can you renovate my house? Hey, can you renovate my house? And as a flipper, it's like, that's not what I do. You know what I mean? But it's like, why are we saying no, we should be saying yes. So now we get to say yes. Cause now I ha we have the capacity to do it. So that's fun. Like we're doing zooms, um, with potential customers every week now. And so it's only a matter of time before we're able to just take on our first client and it'll be so fun. Yeah. Um, but another huge passion you guys is selling properties off market. So like, you know, we, we buy properties off market all the time. Why can't we do it on the back end too? Why do we have to list it and, and drive up prices and pay commissions? We love our realtors no, and nothing against our realtors, but like we see it as a vehicle or a way to keep more local families home and housed is being able to, sell and the house it reminded me because you just brought up a house where we house a local family and so it's like we're able to broadcast it on our social platforms people that are interested it it fits the the mission because we're able to house local families we're also able to keep it relationship focused which when i think when we go to market you know we don't get to meet those people we don't get to hand over keys and bless the house directly with them. And there's something that just gets missed. And so we're able to cut out commissions, keep the, the price of the home lower. Like, for example, we just told one, it's, it's crazy. I'm selling them to all my classmates, my, my Collar Hill classmates. Yeah. It just works out that way. The universe is funny. Um, so see, Collar Hill wasn't that bad. We were able, we were able to buy houses. <laughs> um, True. 
where if we took it to market, it would have been sold for 1.3, but we were able to sell them for sell it to them for a hundred thousand dollars less because it was wow. direct, direct to buyer. Um, and there's nothing more rewarding than blessing a house with that family and handing over keys. And I'll, I'll tell you a quick, really, really cool one that we sold off market. And yeah. this story is unreal. So we, we sold a house off market, um, to a local family that owns a business. It was in a nice neighborhood. Um, and we sold it probably 300 grand below market value. You know, I'm talking about a, a house that's 2.3. We probably could have sold it for close to 3 million, two, two, seven, five, two, eight. Right. Um, but like we made, we were making our margin. They needed their house. It was one of 20 houses. And, and for us, it's like, what's the mission? Let's, let's keep them going. Let's house these families and then let's move on. They ended up buying the house. They, a year later, they went to the bank, got a HELOC. I don't know exactly how much it was for, but they lent us that money and became our private money lenders. I mean, the HELOC must have been a good amount because they lent us double so six full, figures. So full freaking full circle moment. I like know. how crazy cool is that? And now you they're, know? they're our friends. Now right? they've become our friends. You know? Yeah, it's super cool. And they, they believe in what we did. And there's nothing more rewarding than like the people that live in your finished product that love your home that want to like keep perpetuating that. Yeah. I, I want to make sure I understand. So you fixed and flipped a house. Mm -hmm. and instead of listing it on a market, you went directly to the buyer. You sold it yep. to them. Mm -hmm. Yep. You guys had such great energy. You blessed the house with them. Yep. Mm -hmm. They went over and they borrowed money against their house to lend it to you. Yeah. 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 They became our yeah lenders. They, they, and they, now, now they've lent on a bunch of deals and they're like, they want to one day become like do some things like what we're doing, you know? And so mm -hmm. we're walking them through the process. We're both making money at the same time. Mm -hmm. They're lending and learning and it's, it's freaking magical. It's that's crazy. So cool, man. Yeah. So cool. That's incredible. And you're keeping, that's really cool. Cause you're doing it all like with locals, the people you go into high yep. school as well. And just some people there, that's really neat. Cause you're creating more opportunity for the people that are from Hawaii when yeah. like, Everybody exactly. else, is and I mean, yeah. talking about the opportunity, and now these people are walking into equity immediately, right? Because mm -hmm. they bought it below market value, and so they can go, go get a HELOC, do whatever they want, and then they can continue to grow wealth and expedite that. So, like, that's opportunity right there. That's what I'm talking about. Isn't it amazing? Like uh, this. This was very reminiscent of a story that Michael Frankie recently had, where he had to kind of he felt the, uh, I'll say obligation to s help a gal out. Mm -hmm. He was going to, what he thought was going to happen was uh, have to go into it $60,000 more because that's what he had promised that he was going to help her. And then like eventually the next day or two found out that it got cleared and like the universe sort of like worked in his favor wow. because he, he surrendered to what he thought was going to be a much tougher situation. And then yeah. it says, for me, you guys walked away from being able to make a whole lot more money, mm -hmm. but you decided that your principle and your purpose was more important and mm -hmm. the universe rewarded you. And so totally. like, brought it back. Oh, it's it's exactly it. I got goosebumps. Yeah. But, but it Amazing. always does. It mm -hmm. always does. And I feel mm -hmm. like when you're mission driven and you're people driven, the money just comes. You yeah. know what I mean? And comes in other ways and you're going to be just fine and you're mm -hmm. going to live in abundance because you're the one perpetuating that too. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. That's, that's so when awesome. I, that's when I, so I saw this question from Elena. Elena is on your Oscar on here as well. She said, what's after flipping development? Like, what are you guys, what are you wanting to do? Like, yeah. Um, I think we'll never stop flipping just because I, there's so much love behind it. I think we just love a good transformation. And um, I just don't want to flip because it's a necessity. I just want to flip because it's fun. And so I see us going into small multifamily. I'm really not interested in like massive 500, 600,000 unit. I'm more interested in like be 50 and below with like a couple partners and doing that. So small multifamily, I see us doing more education. Um, there's not a lot of education available here on Hawaii. We always specifically, have to, yeah. We always have to go to the mainland for it. So if, can, if I can bring it, we can bring it here. Um, that's a focus of ours. Uh, just building more businesses like um, 
we just started a midterm and short-term rental management company because out of need. So anywhere we can vertically integrate is what we want to do. Um, so just adding more stuff onto that. Yeah, I like the the small multifamily development here um, on in Big Island or um, on Oahu with Bill Seven. It's like a specific bill that we can use, uh, and yeah, anything to hold, right? And and I think that's the thing. Like right now, I mean, can't joke around about it, but flipping is is a job. It's a it's a freaking active business, right? Yeah, like it is full time, <laughs> and and we have a team, and it's still nonstop. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so. I really, really dream of the day where <laughs> we don't have to flip anymore um, to, to keep our business going and growing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and where we can we can flip houses because like a, a great deal came across and right, we're, yeah, let's do that. Right, we're gonna do it. Or if we're still filming a TV show and we need to kind of a thing, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think uh, the next steps are really, potentially some development but in the in my head i'm like how do we educate the most amount of local people mm -hmm. you know what i mean so i'm thinking about like huge bigger events here on oahu there, there's never in events on oahu ever um bigger events more opportunity to show people what financial education is what uh how you can buy a house like we don't learn about money i don't think anywhere really does uh, mm -hmm. But in Hawaii, it's Especially. like very shameful to talk about money in our culture. Mm -hmm. um, it is it, so our people are very undereducated when it comes to investments, financial literacy. Uh, and then the ultimate goal is to try and figure out how we can keep Hawaii uh, affordable, you know, at some level, some affordable housing stuff. Um, I know Tris, so Tris still sits on the board of her nonprofit mm -hmm. and we want to figure out how to merge the, the two. two worlds, right? Where yeah. the nonprofit is coming into the real estate space in some way, shape or form. I mean, so like, there's so many different ways, but it's like, I can't be squirrel about it. Like I got to narrow it in. Is that like buying yeah. land and like building a treatment facility that also has um, halfway houses or is it just buying up? properties where you can rent out per bed, like clean and sober housing, like what does that look like? And so I think it will become crystal clear when God tells me that it's time. Yeah, there's there's that. a ton of opportunity with that because her her nonprofit now, um, Kokua Support Services, they do outpatient treatment mm -hmm. services, like manage representative payee yeah. um, stuff. So like yeah. there's that population needs housing. Mm -hmm. and let's and figure out how will. to make that and happen. always will yeah yeah so so yeah i mean and honestly anything that's can produce passive income is where our attention will go obviously you know what i mean <laughs> well, you guys need me or caroline to come and speak at your event a while yeah uh, see we, there you oh, go you're okay. one of the first calls let me yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I'm telling you. I'm trying to come out in I, july let's go jump out of some airplanes or go scuba diving and then we'll come back i'm down about. let's go yeah. i'm down um, can you both come out in july yeah. Let's go. Let's okay. go. Well, I don't have a W two anymore. Yeah. Yeah. yeah see, there you go. <laughs> um, I do know somebody was asking a question about you know we learned about each other in the creative finance world mentorship. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think I, I actually just helped Tedeva through her yeah. subtail. Uh, she oh, was yep. amazing. Yeah. Um, so have you guys done any sub twos for any of your flips like and and leverage that way of of uh, taking over a property um not for flips but for rentals absolutely i mean who doesn't prefer a good sub two of seller finance or a combo of the two you know um, but not for flips no not a sub two for a flip a, a lot of our flips are always cash so hard money private money um yeah but sub twos for rentals all day long. Yeah, I think, I mean, just for us personally, I mean, if I can buy cash, I'm going to buy cash. It's like the easiest, easiest thing, right? Yeah. Um, and well, so that's always our first shot. Yeah. Um, it, and if we can get it at that price, then we're going to get it at that price. Well, and that's how you're taught, right? Like always present the cash op option first. And so, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm doing a sub till right now. We were able to offer the seller ten thousand dollars more than his highest cash offer because Amazing. he was willing to do subtail. So yeah. just 
I, I think it, there's a time and a place, but I think yeah, I, I totally so think competitive. It yeah. Yeah. I agree. I 1000% agree. I think in Hawaii with the price points that we're dealing so with, it's, it's hard because the amount of difference that we'd be able to offer on a, on a sub two compared to a, a, a cash offer sometimes isn't enough for the seller to make sense of it. But I, if I could do, I don't know. I, yeah, we've just never had any opportunities to like you just gotta, subtail. Just case you start um, pitching them. But I do know people. I do know people <laughs> that have done them here, that, and yeah. and they do that. That's like a strategy that they use. So yeah, yeah, yeah. very cool. Helpful. One thing I wanted to bring up before we uh, wrap up because I have to I have to call somebody who's not helping one of my homeowners. For everybody, if you're not already <laughs> no. on Instagram with them. This is why Instagram is so great. Think of it as a business card, but on their Instagram, they have a link tree right here. So if you click on that link tree, it'll bring you mm -hmm. to this page. And this is where you can see, this all is how you get their buyers list. Things. Yeah, all our stuff. Yeah, all of the stuff. Looks all like you got a mentorship coming in the pipeline, but all kinds yeah. of stuff in here. So you yeah. just connect with them outside of here if you want to rent their Airbnbs, all the all things. So use yeah. Instagram, guys. Use those opportunities for people to see you. And that's how you can connect with Tristan and Kemah. I mean, how many kids do you guys have? You have like 17 kids or something? <laughs> Heck no, girl. I'm done after two. Two kids. Two kids. <laughs> two kids, yeah. 20 flips a year. They're just, they got a lot going on. But this is how you can connect with people outside of here. But is there, I think actually I should have kept sharing it because you guys did have your buy box on here. There we go. Is it the one that says got a deal? Yeah. I yeah, got a deal. Well, I mean, just it just, it's just a out. form you can reach out on. Can, yeah. yeah. But this is how you'd be able to shoot. So if you guys find anything in Hawaii, this is how you're able to send it over to yeah. them. Yeah, yep. man. And and this, you respond? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. hundred percent. Like I all those things pop up notifications immediately on my phone. Um, and I am a true believer, as anyone should, that you know, you gotta be speed to the lead is always, mm -hmm. always the most important thing. I think it's a lot, it's hard for a lot of people too. Mm -hmm. Like they just can't get that through their brain. But mm -hmm. yeah, definitely reach out there or if you DM we're still like looking at all our own dms guys I think our that's... social media is us no one manages it yet <laughs> yeah. but us yeah. um but yeah so i mean when you're getting a response it's literally he or i and i would love for you to guess who it is because we <laughs> they can never figure it out it's yeah. a mystery who is responding to you <laughs> that's a good point i like that well thank you guys for so much for coming on i you answered my question at the beginning and i hope everybody really took that apart if they would have restarted today, they would have started wholesaling so they could stack cash. I mean, I'm glad you guys learned what you did and you know now, but like, I mean, the stress, <laughs> the being in debt, like the Responsibility, headaches, the yeah, headaches, yeah. the risk, the, the weight that you have to carry. It's, yeah. it's yeah. a lot. It's a yeah. lot. It's like that. What's that meme where the dog has everything on fire around it? You're like, everything's fine. You just like, yeah. stressed out because all the deals are happening. How yeah, we like, live constantly. Right? That's it, that, right that there. It's a perfect, the perfect example. Investor life is that. Uh, yeah. Crazy. Uh, <laughs> that is that a hundred percent. If you guys don't know what it is, it's uh. Let me open it up just so everybody can see it. I think it's just a funny freaking picture. But guys. Don't Absolutely. stress it at the beginning. If you have a deal in Hawaii, make sure you bring it over to Tristan yep, and Cam so you're not stressed out like this, like we were. Yeah. Um, I, I I really do appreciate you guys coming on. Ingrid, I'm so glad that you were able to connect with them last week. And the one thing yeah. um, Ingrid told me you guys are just like, eh, I'm going to just say what Ingrid told me you guys said. She's like, man, I'm really impressed yeah. at how like focused you've been. And I heard you say that as well, um, Tristan, like got to get your ducks in a row before you can go and attack something. So everybody in here, if you're watching this or if you're watching their TV show, this wasn't an overnight success. I mean, I guess I, it was an overnight success over six years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. It, it takes <laughs> yeah. a minute. You're not going to get the groove immediately, but joining somebody, partnering with them, asking them questions, there's never a bad time to ask a question. Um, just shoot the shot, be polite, ask, you know, like connect on a human level. And I, I even wrote down your people, purpose, passion. I really like that. I'm going to like, keep, I'm going to mm. bring that up to my team. Um, Love that. Talk about things, but serve and from your service, look how many other opportunities have come your way. And uh, good karma, man. Look at all the good stuff. Dude, exactly. Love that. But you said it. It's like you think that, you know, people are always like, oh, well, what is abundance? What is abundance? And it's like giving and the universe will give it back to you, but it might not be the way that you thought it was going to give it back to you because it's going to be a completely 
different opportunity that's going to blow your freaking mind. But you got to be open to it, right? And you got to constantly just be, nope, abundant, give, 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 give. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Thank well, you, guys. Guys. Yeah, thank you for coming in here. Every yeah, this was fun. It was so much fun. All right. I, uh, what I wanted to just real quick, like, let's yep. say recap. Caroline said you'd wholesale for it to start, but uh, know your buyer's buy boxes, all right? So when you're selling to flippers, know that every flipper has a, a different need. So mm -hmm. flippers that are flipping in Hawaii are doing th things a little bit more different. They don't have to worry about duct work like they do <laughs> here in Arizona. But duct work is expensive, by the way, guys. And um, and again, and you hear this a lot, real estate is a relationship-based business. Um, yes. So those those were my recaps from this, right, on top of the three Ps. But like, yeah. you yeah. know, know who you're servicing, whether that's seller or a flipper, and understand those nuances, get to know the buy boxes, and make sure like, hey, for me, I think it always works that better that way. Knowing who's going to buy your stuff first. And if mm -hmm. it fits that box, I mean, it should be that easy. Boom. So, yeah, 100%. Yeah, I 100% um, agree. I don't know if you guys have met. Uh, Jason just popped in here. You need to connect with Jason Lombardi. He's one of my closers on the Daily Dial. But, dude, he's selling all kinds of deals in Venice Beach in Florida. Oh. So just south of Oh, table. nice. Jason's yeah, yeah. I do guys. know. We do know each other. He's awesome. Okay. Yeah. 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 Jason, yeah. add them to your buyer's list because they're buying in Florida. So he'll get you all of your little, he'll get you fixing flips more than anything, but, uh, nice. saw that he okay, in cool. here. Oh, look, see, he's nice got one now. So of course you do. <laughs> yeah. Of course you do. Well, guys, okay. what is it? It's only what? Two o'clock in, in Hawaii? Yeah. Two but o'clock. We, we still got more, several meetings to go. Yeah, we have to fly out tonight to LA to go to Newport for an event. That we're but we're flying back on Friday yeah, morning. Yeah, it's, so. it's a quick one. It's literally like just for one, the show, one night, and then we're flying okay. back. Yeah, yeah. but yeah, well, I can't so wait long. to see you guys. Thanks, yeah, I'm gonna. Guys. I'll text you guys so we can set something up. Come out in uh, July. We'll get together in our group chat. Thank you guys so Thanks. much, guys. If you've not already, check out um a uh, renovation Aloha. We're gonna get mixed up with deals Aloha at renovation Aloha. <laughs> um, every is it every Thursday? Is it one Thursday of the month that you guys do deals in Aloha? So it's just once a month we do a deals and we'll meet up. The next one is April 23rd. Next week. No. Is it like the second week mm -hmm. of the month, the third week of the month? So it's normal. It's very, it's, it's normally like the third week of each month, yeah. but it's very investor specific, right? So it's depending on that investor that we're showcasing that month and their schedule. But April's deals and Aloha meetup is Tuesday, the 23rd at 10 a.m. And all the info is on our social. And it's a cool, cool. deal because it's a, it's a creative one. Yeah. It's a it's a sub to seller finance and they're uh, keeping it. Yeah. So cool. Oh, no. I'm going to just throw it up on screen so everybody can see that. But this is on their Instagram, guys. So if you go to Instagram, you can find it. This is how you can connect with people. I would connect with people on the freaking side chat as well. Um, that's the get in the room. There with it is. Yeah. And guys, yeah. Jason is a fellow sub two student. And yeah, he so is. he is who we built collective stays with. So, I mean, there's so much power in relationships. This is awesome. Guys, I'm excited. I, I'm coming out. We're going to see you guys. I appreciate it. Um, I hope you get at least like some beach time in before you hit your flight or do something like Hawaiian. No, not going to happen know. this weekend when we get this home. This weekend, do it for me. So at least upload <laughs> a picture. Guys, yeah, man, man. <laughs> right on. All right. We'll All see right, you later. Everybody, thanks for tuning in today. Stop Remember, us. we're here every, every Wednesday at 4 o'clock Arizona time or uh, 1 o'clock if you're in Hawaii time. Um, Thank you guys for showing up. Bye, everybody.